Good morning, family. I want you to go ahead and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. How many of you know that there's no God like the God that we serve? Amen. Why don't you say, there's no God like Jehovah. Oh, say it like you really mean it. There's no God like Jehovah. All right, come on, why don't you put those hands together. Come to celebrate the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Sing this with me. Everybody just clap your hands and say, The days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord Oh yeah And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And these are the days of the harvest The fields are all white in your world yes they are and we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the lord such as say it now brighter right right on the cloud shining like the sun and the trumpet's call come on and lift your lift voice your it's the year, year of jubilee out of science Behold, he comes in. Behold, he comes. Riding. Riding on a cloud. And shining. Shining like the sun. Yeah. And the trumpet's call. Come on and lift, lift your, voice. your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Yeah, yeah. Out of Zion's salvation. Just speak like the days yeah. of Elijah. Declaring the word of the Lord. Oh, yeah. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Sing it with me. And these are the days of the harvest. Let me hear you. The fields are white as your world. Come on. And we, and we are. What are we saying? Declaring the. Behold, he come. Behold, he come. Riding, riding on a cloud. And he shined it. Shining like the sun. And the trumpets go on. The trumpets go Come on and lift your voice. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Year of Jubilee. Out of science here. Out of science here. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation. Behold, he comes in. Behold, he come. Riding. Riding on a cloud. Shining. Shining like the sun. Oh, oh, oh. And the Come on and lift your voice. Lift your voice. It's the year of, year of Jubilee. Out of Zion, yeah. Out of Zion's hill, salvation. Come on, put those hands hey. together. And we're going to declare the message that we're going to tell to everyone. Yeah. There's no God like, there's, there's no, no God like Jehovah. Jehovah. Yeah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Yeah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. Ooh. There's no God like Jehovah. Ooh. There's no God like Jehovah. Ooh. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. There's nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. There's nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. Like God we serve. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no, there's no God like Jehovah. There's nobody. 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 There's no God like Jehovah. You can search high and low. There's no God like Jehovah. There's nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. There's nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. There's nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, what's your blessing this morning? Come on. If you're 
If you love them, just clap your hands. If you love them, just clap your hands. Clap them like you love Jesus. Clap them like you're born again. Did he make a way when you found there was no way? Clap them like you love Jesus. And clap them like it's good to you. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and stomp your feet. Come on and stomp your feet. Yeah. Come put those hands together. Yeah. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 You can search high. There's no God like Jehovah. You can look low. There's no God like Jehovah. Still you won't find. There's no God like Jehovah. No, not one. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Nobody can be there. There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. He can clear your mind. There's no God like it. There's no God like it. Nobody like it. Nobody like it. Nobody like it. Won't you tell somebody? Won't you let them know? There's nobody. There's nobody. There's nobody. Behold, behold. Out of fire, salvation, salvation comes. Yeah, yeah. Anybody glad about it? Amen. No God like it. Amen. Amen. No God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. There's people worshiping a lot of different names, but I'll tell you, there's no God like Jehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Behold, he comes. Amen. We are looking for that great day. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we approach the throne of grace this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you so much, Lord, that you are just already in our midst, oh God. And Lord, we are just coming here to declare the word of the Lord today, oh God. There is no God like you, Lord. There's no God that saves like you or heals like you or delivers like you, Lord God. You are an awesome and mighty God, Lord. You perform miracles, Lord God, signs and wonders, oh God. And we are open, Lord God, for you to move in that way today, Lord, in our midst, oh God. Have your way, Lord. Oh, Oh God, we ask you to bless our Pastor Thomas today, Lord, and Lord, you hide him behind your cross of Calvary, Lord, and just breathe a word into him, oh God, to just impart to your people today, Lord. Let your word find its rightful place in the hearts of your people today, Lord God, that we can walk out here edified and stronger and better than when we came in, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for our pastor, our first lady, oh Lord God, and bringing them here today, Lord, and God keeping them all week long. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You've been so good. Hallelujah. And we come to worship and lift up your name today, Lord God, to give you all the honor, to give you all the glory, to give you all the praise because you're worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, and continue to bless this service and let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Good morning, Antioch family and friends. It's time for responsive reading taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 4 and 6. I'll read the leader, you read the congregation. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Altogether, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The hymn today will be number 27. Uh, blessed Assurance. Pastor Jones, First Lady Jones, ministers, Antioch family and friends, those watching us online, good morning. How y'all doing today? Oh, that's so good. Mother, you look great up there, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, two announcements. Save the date. Saturday, February 24th at 8.30 a.m., we will present the Willie Lynch letter, The Making of a Slave. 
It was in the interest and business of slaveholders to study human nature, the slave nature in particular, with a view to practical results. The workshop will be held at the Antioch Event Center, register for a continental breakfast. Antioch, we are excited to announce that the couples ministry will be joining back together this month on Saturday, February 24th <laughs> at 4 p.m. You can register and request childcare on the church app. The Antioch Missions and Young Adult Ministries would like to invite you to help us in reaching those in need with Operation Blessing Bags. If you would like to be a blessing, we ask you partner with us and bring a travel-sized item listed on the flyer on the screen. You can bring in items each Sunday after today through March 17th. You can obtain a list of these items from the table outside after service. Please place your items in the brown box in the front foyer. We appreciate your support. Starting today, we will begin the passing of the collection basket by the ushers. Come join one of our small Sunday school classes at 9 a.m. Adult classes are held in the sanctuary and via Zoom. Head to our website for the link. Children's Sunday school classes will be held in the classrooms only. Join us this Wednesday for youth and adult Bible study. Bible study will be in the sanctuary and on Zoom. Head to our website for the link. As always, we ask that you keep our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families in your thoughts and prayers. Is there anyone that celebrated a birthday since last Sunday? <laughs> Happy birthday. How about any anniversaries? I hope everyone had a great Valentine's Day. If you didn't, Jesus loves you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at AMBC Oviedo. Have you downloaded our app? It's available in the Google Play Store for the Androids <laughs> and the Apple Store for Apple iPhones. You can download the app on your Amazon Kindle and on your Apple and Roku TVs. You can find the app by typing in Antioch NBC Oviedo. Please create a profile and allow notifications to stay up to date with things going on at Antioch. The parking and security ministries at the direction of Dr. Stone and the Oviedo Police Department are asking that you please use turn signals to signal your intent when exiting the parking lots. They are also asking that you only cross the street where the police officer is located. We are pleased to have with us today the officers of the Sharing Center, Ms. Nina Yoon, President and CEO, and Ms. Shalisa Griffin, the Development Manager. We also... We also acknowledge one of our own, Mr. Larry Bonner, who serves as a board member of the Sharing Center. <laughs> to make this partnership happen, we like to thank our benevolence ministry, Ms. Kathy Harris, Ms. Betty Miller, and Ms. Myrna Small. <laughs> we are pleased to have you join us today and thank you for all you do. Do we have any visitors today? If so, please stand. We are excited and grateful that you have come to visit with us this morning. Our hope is that you experience the love of Christ and his presence during our worship because Jesus loves you and we do too. Bless you. We have one card, it says, thank you. To Pastor Jones, Minister Tara, and the body of AMBC, I would like to express a sincere thank you for your leadership and invitation, allowing me to share in your most recent evangelism workshop. As leaders within the community, AMBC serves as a beacon of hope and of light that encompasses our Savior Jesus, our Lord. Thank God for your dedication to your work of the ministry. May God continue to lift and bless you during this time of harvest. In his service, Evangelist Brenda Green. <laughs> have a great day and a blessed week. And now we'll have a few video announcements, a, mes a message from Pastor Wolf. Can the people from the Sharing Center please stand? A 
Okay, so yeah, have a blessed week. Uh, we will have a message from Pastor Wolf and then a moment in black history. And then I believe a baby dedication. and welcome to the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church Newlywed Game. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We got three awesome couples here and we're gonna get right into it with the first question. Question one, who is more likely to procrastinate? A very simple way. What's your answer, Mrs. Gussie? <laughs> oh, give my hand for being correct. Give my hand for being correct. Give my hand for being correct. I'm going Oh. <laughs> Question number two. What television show would the husband most likely be on? I said sports show. A sports show. Give him a hand. I chosen. The chosen. The chosen. Okay. Chosen. Yes, we got the coffee show. <laughs> we could not be more further than that. What about the Jesse? If you know this is the old house, it's old house. Man, it's gonna be a long ride home. Uh, what is the best thing husband? Ever bought I can think of some answers myself here as a married man. Shouts out to my wife. Uh, uh, it's an easy answer here. Let's see those answers. My wedding ring. The wedding ring. Yeah. Yeah. The, wolf, the, wolf, the, wolf. the Henny, the Red Charger. This is delicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you say? Uh, For those who are watching, if you would like to take a chance, to participate in the Antioch Newlywed Game. Come join us February 24th, 4 p.m. See you there.
All right, give it up for Young Culture, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Uh, real quick before, because uh, I know we got a baby dedication. Um, where are the couples at, though? Any couples in the house? All right. Listen, I'm going to be real quick. You saw the video here. You heard the announcement. We're meeting this upcoming Saturday. Um, and I thank you for the Gussies, the Moblies. If y'all in the building, amen, wave your hand, let them know. We have coupled together. We're trying to bring this ministry back uh, for the couples. And the reason we usually hear it as marriage ministry, we're saying couples because if you're dating somebody, if you're engaged to somebody, if you're married, we want you to come out to this ministry because the underlying goal is to get people married. And we want you to have the tools and the resources when you be ready to get married. Amen. So that's the 24th this upcoming Saturday. At 4 p.m., we have an event in that morning, so we do want you to come back out at 4 o'clock if you come in the morning. Uh, you have light refreshments for breakfast there. You have a light uh, refreshments for a meal in the afternoon as well. You can register. We want to have a head count to get an idea of how many people are coming. Please go to the church app and register to attend. We have a couple of spaces available for child care. If you need child care, our nursery will be here uh, to help as well with child care. So again, that's this Saturday, the 24th at 4 p.m. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pastor Jones, Pastor Thomas, Ministries, and Antioch family, good morning. Good morning. This is Sunday, on behalf of Sunday School Ministry, oh, on behalf of Sunday School Ministry, join us in a moment in black history. I hope you enjoy media. Please show the video for this week. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. All right, let's learn and celebrate. Black musicians are the reasons for great music we listen to, like hip hop and jazz, the blues, rap, R&B. So take time, explore, so you're not missing out on great music throughout history. Whitney Houston, now she could sing. Stevie Wonder's blind, and his music is king. Prince played 27 instruments. There's so many incredible black musicians. So make sure you go and listen. It's that time. Change the world. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. Being unique and using their brains are why the next list of people have great acclaim. I'm gonna take a second to recognize the names of some black minds that went ahead and changed the game. Mae Jemison made space her quest. Meghan Markle is a royal philanthropist. When you lose your way and need that GPS, go ahead and thank Dr. Gladys West. Then there's those who make magic with words. Maya Angelou is an uncaged bird. Her poetry is our great fortune. Paving paths for poets like Amanda Gorman. Go ahead, Miss Amanda Gorman. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. Strong. For years they've been breaking records all day long. Ha, there's so many now and in the past. Like Jesse Owens, who he ran so fast. Stephen Curry hits that three-point shot. Ballerina Missy Copeland dances on her toes a lot. Serena Williams plays tennis so bold. Simone Biles flips and wins all the gold. Ooh, let's move to the scene where black people shine like stars on screen. Of talk shows and more, she's queen. So take a bow to Oprah. Jordan, Denzel, and Shonda Rhimes are just a few who make all media shine. Celebrate black actors, that's the answer. Like Chadwick Beast, the first black panther. 
Wakanda Forever. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. Black freedom fighters took a stand to live in an equal and loving land. They worked so hard just to break through. So sit back and listen as I name a few. Martin L. K. Jr. had a dream to unify. Moving bridges at six, told segregation goodbye. Worlds apart, took a stand by taking a seat. Stacey Abrams votes for equality. Kamala Harris, the first to ascend to a role where women have been absent. Miss Harris knows how to represent by becoming the first black Asian vice president. <laughs> Ooh, hey, come on. The next man is the most Americana. He's super duper smart and he's smooth like a samba. The first black president, Barack Obama. Let's say amen. Let's say amen again. Amen. Today we are blessed again to dedicate some babies. Amen. I'm always yet excited to dedicate children. Amen. Zoe and Lucas McKnight, would you, would the parents come, Triskin and, and Jasmine, would you come and, and bring the kids right here in front of us? Let's give them a hand as they come. Stand right there. Is Lucas here? Lucas, hi. Luke, come on up here, Lucas. <laughs> Bring that baby. <laughs> Amen. He's full of energy, ain't he? <laughs> hey, why not you guys stand and just kind of face me right here? I want to say something to you. First of all, we want to say thank you so much for uh, thinking enough of us to dedicate these children. It's an honor to know that you guys are recognizing that these children is not by luck and by chance. God has given you these children, and you're wanting to dedicate these children back to him. And every time that we do this, we always read a particular scripture from the book of St. Mark, chapter 10. And uh, Jesus was going around and he was healing the sick and raising the dead. He was doing all kinds of things. That was just amazing. And in the midst of all of that, don't worry about it, we good, we good. In the midst of all of that, he wanted, the parents came for him to dedicate or to touch their children. And the disciples got offended by that because the parents had the audacity to come up with Jesus. With all the stuff he had to do, they would come up and want him to bless their children. So read from Mark, it says, and they brought young children to Christ that he should touch them and the disciples rebuked those that brought them. But Jesus, when he saw it, he was much displeased and said to them, Suffer the children to come to me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And very, verily, I say unto you, 
whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And the Bible says he took them up in his arms and he blessed him. Can you imagine? Here's the same guy that raised the dead, healed the sick, and yet he stopped to take the time to bless little children by these parents. And his disciples felt like, hey, listen, our master and Lord got too much to be doing for you parents to be bringing these kids up in front of our church, in front of our people. But you know what? I want to thank God that you thought enough to do this for the Lord. When I was born, ain't nobody told nobody anything. They just say, that's, that's this child and that was it. But you're coming up here to know that these children come from the Lord. And I want to say to you, it says, Dearly beloved, the children are divine human tasks developing a personality at the birth of the child is the most delicate and serious task of which a parents can be called. The love of the home affects the child in a thousand ways for good. As this child grows, they may learn to receive the spiritual nourishment from their father as a rose drink in the sunlight. And I want to say this to the, to the parents here, especially to you, uh, Lucas, I'll start with you first. I mean, Tristan, babies are not by luck and by chance. There are some men that wish that they were able to have children. And God thought enough of you to give these children. In the world that we live in now, children need a dad. They need a big, strong dad. They need a dad that knows something about the Lord because all this jacked up stuff that's going on in the world right now, these children need somebody they can turn to. And you know what? I want to say this to you, Tristan. See, I talk, Pastor Wolf is and some of these guys and big old dudes, but these children are going to think you're the biggest dude in the whole world. And this little girl, that little girl there, she needs to know how to come home to daddy when those little boys trying to mess with her. She can show them a picture of a big old daddy. And this boy, he's going to be just like you. You got to watch what you say. You got to watch what you do because the Bible says children are a heritage of the Lord, which means that they didn't start with you guys. They started with God. And I want to say this. Every time I say this, it kind of freaks people out. But guess what? Tristan, you had these babies first, and God chose the woman in Jasmine to give you these children. And you guys are blessed beyond measure, and you're responsible for these children. So I want to say this to you. Do you promise to train this child in body and in soul in the service of the Lord and fellowship with God? Y'all promise to do that? And do y'all promise to do all that you can to lead these children? at a proper age to confess Christ for themselves. Y'all promise to do that? Now, I want you, I want you, Tristan, to turn around and let everybody know your son's name first. Start with him first. Amen. Lucas, I want... I would just kind of turn around with you, tell everybody what's your, your daughter's name. Let everybody know. And say it like you're proud of your baby, man. <laughs> and everyone watching me, Zoe Amaya. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Could I ask now the godparents to come up? Godparents, amen. Grandparents, homeboys, homegirls, everybody that came <laughs> as a part of this dedication for these babies. Tristan, y'all can turn back toward me for a second. God premises Randolph and Sherry, Sean, and Latoya. Where is, where is these names? Okay. Can I say that? I want to see the grand. I want the God parents stand right here in front so I can see y'all. Amen. Let me ask y'all something. Did anybody coerce you all to do this? You weren't forced to do this. No one put a gun and made y'all do this. Y'all chose to do this. Do you all promise? In the event, God forbid, that anything happens to these parents, you are seeing as godparents in front of this company and before God, that God forbid that anything happened to these two parents, that you're willing to raise these children as if they were your own. Are y'all saying that? And do y'all promise to pray for them and do whatever you can that they can raise these children in the nourish and admonition of the Lord? Y'all promise to do that? Can I see the grandparents? I want the grandparents to stand. I want, I want to look at the grandparents because this is the stage that I'm in. Grandparents, I want to see the grandparents. Come stand right here. Come on, Grandma, Granddad. 
Raise your hand so I can make sure I get them right, grandparents. You know, with grandparents, I love this part of my life, being a grandparent. I can get to sugar them up and send them home to my kids. I love it that when my grandkids come over to the house, that you know what we can have. Don't y'all tell my wife I said this because she's sitting right over there. This is between us. That I get them a chocolate on some days and they be jumping around and Candace and Dinah want to know why these kids so hypo I don't say a word amen I wipe them real clear but it's but if I could have got these grandkids I say it all the time if I had got my grandkids before I got my kids I'd have did that first I'd have did that first so grandparents I know sometimes we get here and we say that you know what I'm not raising anybody else's kids y'all gonna raise your own kids but I want to say to the grandparents sometimes sometimes and there are people in this room that can testify that it was a grandparent that raised him. Do I have anybody in the house that was raised by grandparents? So it's important that you grandparents know that sometimes we may have to do it all over again. So do y'all promise in the event that anything happens to them, will you all be willing to do it all over again to raise these children as if they were your very own? Would you do that if God forbid anything happened? Would y'all do it all over again? Amen. Now I want to see the hands of those that came in support of these children. Just kind of raise your hand. Amen. I didn't, you know what? I'm kind of jealous because I have no kind of support system like this. These children are on a good. So I'm going to ask that Pastor Wolf would anoint these children now. Zoe and Lucas. That's okay, Lucas. That's okay. Could y'all bring them, bring the kids back so I so we can pray for them? bring them away. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for these children. We ask in Jesus' name that you remember, and God, remember the day that these parents thought enough of you to bring these children and to give them back to you, to dedicate them back to you, because they realized that children are truly the heritage of the Lord. And God, and we dedicate these children, ask that God, you grant to these children wisdom beyond years, that God, that whatever that you call and ordain a purpose for their life, they'll fulfill it God to the full and we give you praise and give you glory that God we've had this privilege to play a small part in their lives and saying to you and before this company that God that it's not by luck and by chance they're here because you ordained it and we give you praise now we pray this in Jesus name amen and amen Certificate of Baby Dedication. We hereby commit to raising this child, that's your parents talking, Lucas McKnight, in nurture and admonition of the Lord on the 18th day of February in the year of our Lord, 2024, at Antioch Mission Baptist Church in Oviedo. Pastor Charles Jones, Pastor, I'd like to give you this. We hereby commit to raise this child, Zoe McKnight, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord on the 18th day of February in the year of our Lord, 2024, at Antioch Mission Baptist Church in Oviedo. We'd like to present this also to you. And again, thank you so much for allowing us to play a small part. And thank you all for coming up for being a support to them. You may be seated. Let's give them a hand. Amen. It's offering time. The offering will pass around to receive your, the offering tray will be passed around to receive your offering. You can also give online and through our church app, AMBC Oviedo. You can also mail in your gift to the church at 311 East Broadway Street, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. Or you could bring in your gift and place it in the drop box in the front of the church. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. 
Thank you for watching over and thank you for watching over us this week. Bless this offering. Bless those who gave and bless those who wanted to give but couldn't give. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
many times. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from John, the 15th chapter, and we're going to begin reading that the first verse. If you don't mind standing for the word, please. John 15, beginning that first verse. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth more, much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. The Lord's word is already blessed. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Come on and worship the Lord. It's always a great time to worship the Lord. Give the Lord a standing ovation. If you can stand, it's God who made us and not we ourselves. We didn't just pop up in the world. God made the world and then he made us in his image. And he gave us everything that we need to survive. Come on and give our creator a hand clap. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. We worship you today, God. We just thank you, Lord God, for this place, Lord God, of, uh, of prayer, God. We thank you, God, for your house, Lord, that your Father's house shall be called a place of prayer, a place of connection, Lord, a place where we can speak to you, Lord, and, um, and you can also speak to us. We thank you, God, that this is a place of worship, Lord, where we can offer up sacrifices of praise. And, Lord, no matter what we've been challenged with, Lord, and no matter what we go through, God, and no matter what challenge we currently face, God, you're still God. And so we worship you, and we give you honor, and we give you glory, and we give you praise. We worship you, Lord. And we bless you, God. We just thank you, Lord, for your presence on this morning, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're present, Lord, to heal. We thank you, God, that you're present, God, to deliver, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you're here, Lord God, uh, just to usher us into everything, God, that you have for us, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. 
and worship you, Lord God, and the beauty of holiness on this morning, God. We bless you and honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're, we're excited uh, to be here to share with you on this morning and thank God for Pastor Jones and um, Mother Jones. Amen. And um, we thank God for everyone in, in this local assembly, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we thank God for, for each and every one of you on today. So just want to want to share with you um, today, I guess I will start by, by reading something here. And Jan, I have my Y'all, y'all make sure y'all pay attention and just take notes. I don't, really don't know how to, how this day going to go, you know, with preaching or whatever, but I do have some things I want to share with you, and we'll just move as, as the Spirit allows and leads in this space in these two hours that we have. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, we just have to do what we can with the two hours that we have. All right? So, but, yep, Jen... <laughs> Jan, I, I do have the uh, bulletin. I, I really, really like that bulletin. So thank you, Jan, for, for that. But I want to read something that you guys probably have, um, have heard before. And it says, a man found an eagle's egg and put it in the nest of a barnyard hen. The eaglet hatched with the brood of chicks and grew up with, with them. All his life, the eagle did what the barnyard chicks did, thinking he was a barnyard chicken. He scratched the earth for worms and insects. He, he clucked and cackled, and he would thrash his wings and fly a few feet in the air and then come back down. Years passed, and the eagle sadly grew old like we all do. One day, he saw a magnificent bird above him in the cloudless sky. It glided in graceful majesty among the powerful wind currents with scarcely a beat on its strong golden wings. The old eagle looked up in awe. Who's that, he asked. That's the eagle, the king of the birds, said one of his neighbors. He belongs to the sky, and we belong to the earth. We're chickens. <laughs> So the eagle lived and sadly died a chicken, for that's what he thought that he was. And it's sad that that happens in our life, that we live our life sometimes trying to be who's in the magazine. And then we get sad when our physique doesn't ever really match that of what we see and is betrayed. And we don't know that some of these people get sick trying to look like that. It's sad that we grow up and live our lives trying to be what somebody else thought we should be. What, what our, our mom thought we should be, what our dad, trying to be like our dad or trying to be like someone else other than 
living our lives and being who God created us to be. <clears throat> I want to drop that in there since we, we gave God glory and we gave God praise because he is our creator. That's what we did. You know, we, we said let's thank God and let's worship God because it's him who has made us and not we ourselves. If we ever really want to understand and know who we are, we, we have to not even uh, look so much at ourselves, but we have to check in with the creator. We have to check in with the creator because sometimes based on things that we've been through in life and some of the things that somebody has told us that we were and some of the things that people tell us that we cannot be, some of these things, uh, uh, you know, they stick in our minds and all of a sudden we don't even believe who God says that we are. And so it's important, praise God, that we, hallelujah, don't even uh, focus too much on ourselves, but the creation, those who were made in the image and the similitude of God, we need to go back to the creator and sit before the creator and say, God, what on earth am I here for? And it's in that place where you'll find uh, the answer, amen, in direction, praise God. And I'm praying, even, even as I'm saying this now, God, I pray for it that you would minister by your spirit, not only on this time, but even as the people that are here, myself are here, God, that we would find purpose and that we'll be able to move forward, God, into everything, God, that you have called us to be, God. I thank you, Lord God, for breaking down, God, self-esteem issues and challenges, God, that we might have within ourselves and all of the negative things that we've heard, God, what we cannot be and all of the, the boundaries that have been set up in the world. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for, uh, for, for just you to show us, Lord God, that we move forward into who you have created us to be. And so we thank you for this, and we bless you in Jesus' name, amen. So we want to talk, we want to talk today, my God, about capacity. Do we have that uh, up on the screen, capacity? So capacity, I remember th this stuff is really near and dear to me, and when I was holding this, I mean, when Jen created I was like, Jen, that is so awesome, you know? because I really feel it, and uh, me being here today, I remember, remember doing some, some studying and, and staying up sometimes 24 hours, trying to get papers done to turn in uh, papers, learning about different subjects that I did not know before, and I would think as I'm going through some of these studies and some of the things that I'm learning, I would think, well, God, um, God is just expanding my capacity. So some of the things that I didn't know and some of the hard work and time that I had to put in in order to study, praise God, and sometimes didn't do too well on some of the things that I stayed up so late for. And it makes you think, well, what in the world am I doing? Why am I wasting all this time to learn something? And then you still don't really get it. And then you have to, if you really want to make it, if you really want to be who God created you to be, you have to fail sometimes and you have to get back up again with the lessons, praise God, that you learn when you fail so you can get back up and keep going. So because you fail at something or you're trying to do something, praise God, doesn't mean that that's the end. You can keep on going and growing. Uh, for, for those who do exercise and stuff, you can keep putting the reps in. Keep putting the reps in. You can start at one level, but you keep putting the reps in. And just because you get tired or you fatigue, just because you, you pull a muscle sometime, go to the doctor, take some time off, and get right back in the... Get right back in the race. Praise God. And so I was just thinking a lot of times, really, in study, uh, studying thing. that's where I was thinking. I said, man, God, I think that you just, 
expanding my capacity. And I think that through the learning and through the practice of certain things, at one day, at some day, I'll be able to maybe move through things a little bit easier because of what I went through. I remember the very first, uh, I think it was the second sermon that I preached here at Antioch. Pastor Jones told me to, to preach, and I said, yeah, man, yeah. It was the second time that I, I would preach after my trial sermon, and I got up in the other church, and when I got up there to preach, my legs and everything was shaking. I was just, I didn't know how I was going to do that. And Pastor Jones, he wasn't supposed to preach that day. He was supposed to just be sitting down like he's doing now. But that was the second time I would preach, and I didn't preach because I was just shaking. My knees were shaking. Like, if I was standing here, you guys wouldn't see my knees shaking, but he was sitting right there. We used to have a, the pulpit, you know, and, man, he, he say, uh, he say, son, that's all right. <laughs> he say, son, that's all right. I got it today. I can, I can do it today. But, you know, Every time after that, I've been able somehow with the help of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you one of the things that I learned. I learned to depend on God. I learned to depend on God. And so sometimes I get up here, like I don't worry about certain order and how things going to go. But that's why I told you what I told you at the beginning. I don't know how everything going to turn out, but I know God gave me something to say. And I hope that you can hear it. I hope that you can take some notes and see what the Lord is saying to you. So I'm, I'm really right now, I'm not looking for a particular order or anything. I'm looking to, to seek the Lord and see how the Lord ministers and moves because it's not me, praise God. I'm, I'm not giving you this message. This is a message that I've been before the Lord to get for you. But during that time, after that time, I, I started to study the Holy Spirit. And it was this the Holy Spirit that empowers us and gives us gifts, praise God. And it's the Holy Spirit that actually teaches. And so once I learned that, after that time when I was shaking, I began to just fellowship with God more and depend on the Holy Spirit so that it's not me who has to worry about. I just present myself up here. I don't know everything, but I know if I present myself to God, praise God, I'm looking for God to minister through me. And so it's God that's speaking to you. Praise God. And from that time when I was shaking, that was something, that was a, a place where I had, like I told y'all, the next time when I had to preach, I couldn't say, man, I ain't make it last time. I can't come back. I went back, and I've been, been coming back for over 20 years. And so failure is not final. Failure is not final. And uh, some, some people say we win some, we lose some, but we can win some and learn some. You can, you can when from your failures, you can learn from your failures and try to see how you can figure it out. And at least the time when you fail, now you have some experience. You have some experience now that when you get back up, you can take this back into the direction or into the calling, praise God, that God has for you. Amen? So I, I'm, I'm glad I, I shared this with you because it, this, is, uh, this, this is very near and dear to me because these scriptures and the whole thing about capacity is not something that I'm bringing up to you today just to tell you something. It's something to share with you so that you don't stop before you become who God created you to be. Y'all remember, I was going through one of the most difficult times in my life. And the scripture that, that Sister uh, Minister Tar read from, uh, from John chapter 15 that's the scripture that God gave me in one of the most difficult times in my life. God gave me John chapter 15. Right here in the, right here and um, see, this, this is real stuff that I'm telling you to encourage you that, yeah, that failure is not final 
And hopefully you don't find yourself old, right, scratching around with chickens when you're supposed to be soaring. Praise God. You don't let failures or what somebody say to you keep you down. You can look to God and ask God to help you get up again and you can move forward and fulfill, praise God, and and expand the capacity, amen, that God has uh, of the gift, the, the potential, exercise the potential that God has given you so that hopefully your potential will become productivity. Man, it was one of the most challenging times of my life, and I was hurt, and I was uh, just, man, really, really beat, but I was still sticking with God. You're still sticking with God. Didn't know what the next day was going to bring. Didn't know how everybody was feeling about me or how everybody was looking. I mean, this was really a challenging time, but I stuck with God. And God told me, he said, he gave me John chapter 15. Y'all told y'all to take notes. Now y'all write that down. He gave me John chapter 15. And basically he said, he, he said to me, he said, abide in me. God don't talk. When he speak to me, he don't speak as much as I speak. He probably say, man, you ain't no kin to me, but I am your son, God. You know I'm your son. It just, I'm just not as wise as you. It take me longer to get this stuff out. But I figure that God, he don't talk as much as I do. Sometimes he'll give me a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Praise God. It won't be no long thing, but I know it came from the Lord. And as I take the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge that he gives me and expand upon it, it grows. God told me to abide in him. And I, I stuck with God through that storm. And it was some more storms that came. And there's still some storms a day, but I'm still... I'm still sticking with God. It was so challenging. So y'all read that. It was so challenging for me, but God gave me his word. I still have some of the notes from that time. And y'all, I'm I'm, going to share some things. I got a couple of slides. But I'm just trying to let you know that this is not, I'm not, this is not a game. This, This is serious in the same way that God brought me through. In the same way, I'm still, I'm not standing here because I'm special. I'm not standing here because I'm stronger than anybody else. I'm standing here because of the grace of God. I never would have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But I'm glad to see, praise God, that I'm here today. I don't know all the words that I can say I never would have made it. But these are notes for from 15 years ago. From, from that one word that God gave me about him, and I continued to study that and look at it, and he gave me pages and pages of stuff that I needed to get down into that was going to give me strength to actually make it. Because if it had not been for God giving me a word and say, hey, don't worry about what nobody's saying. Don't worry about how nobody looking at you. Don't worry about how nobody feel. You stay focused on me. You just, you abide in me. And if you abide in me, son, y'all read the rest of the scripture. If you abide in me, you're going to bring forth some fruit. Right now, you feel like you about to die. Right now, you feel like you ain't going to make it. Right now, you can't even see tomorrow, even though you know joy going to come in the morning. You can't see it right now. It's dark, and it's lonely, and it's dreary, and everybody talking, and everybody got something to say except for worrying about their own business. Look, it looks dark, but you got this word that says, abide in me, and I abide in you, praise God. And at some point, Jermaine, you're going to bring forth some fruit. You're going to make it through this thing, praise God, and you're going to bring forth the fruit, praise God, and the purpose that I created you for. Sometimes, no matter how, who you are, how great you are, the, the, the largest tree is a seed, and that seed has to go through some seasons of darkness. I don't care how, what majestic tree that you see. That tree didn't start with its, with its branches spreading and moving towards the sky and with fruit hanging all over it that's people picking off, and it's more seed. No, that seed started in a dark place. 
that, that, that tree started as a seed that was not even a tree, but within that tree, within that seed, it had the capacity. Within that seed, it was not a tree yet. Somebody say not yet. Not yet. So look at somebody say, I'm not everything Look at Malachi, look at, look at her, look at her. Say, say, I'm not everything. Tell her now, I'm not everything that God made me to be. But God is not finished with me yet. When I come forth, I shall be as pure gold. You can't let no dark seasons and times stop you and discourage you hey pray if you got to cry cry for a moment if you got to weep weep for a moment if you got to sit down and take a time out take a time out for a minute take take a sabbatical get off go somewhere for 30 40 days but don't you give up on being who god called you to be because you have a capacity within you to be more than you ever knew more than your mama ever told you can you could be more than your failures tell you your, your your failures say listen you 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 messed up now praise god you go to get a job they won't give you no job because you messed up they won't let you can't get in this organization because you messed up but you keep looking to God because he made you and your failures, praise God, do not discount, praise God, do not disqualify you from God and why he made you. You still have the capacity in you to be exactly who God created you to be. It don't matter if you're older. Sometimes we get older and say, man, it's too late. It ain't too late. Sometimes God will wait. Sometimes you just need to stop trying to. You done tried everything and then partnered up with everybody except God. You done tried the first time with Sammy. That ain't work. It's all right. Sometimes things don't work. Then you go get with Bolita. I'm trying to see Pastor Jones. He, I'm getting all these names downloaded from Pastor Jones. Straight, to, straight from him to me. Then you get with Bolita. <laughs> It don't work. Then you say, shoot, yeah, man, that pastor say, don't give up. It's capacity to me. I'm going to go get me somebody else. Then you go get with somebody else. But you never take time to seek God and say, God, where is it that you want me to be? They they trying to help me out with these. That, that first, put up the first slide, y'all. And I only have seven minutes, but I hope y'all got something. Like Pastor Jones said, I got a whole bunch of notes. But look at this, look at the first one before that. The first one before that. The first uh, slide, if y'all can do it. It's okay. With the first one that says capacity, basically we want to talk about the dynamics of, of growth and productivity. One of the things you want to look at is John chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Read it on your own. It'll tell you how being connected to God, right, will cause you to be fruitful. Even if you go through the dark times, you got to wait. Sometimes you got to wait till your change comes. Sometimes you got to wait till your season comes. Sometimes you got to go through some stuff. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next slide, y'all. Purpose. Uh, let me let me read this one. Let me see. Okay. And God said, this is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 through 13. And God said, Let the earth bring forth what? Grass and the what? Herb yielding seed and the what? Fruit tree yielding fruit after what? His kind. Sometimes we trying to be another kind. Sometimes, y'all lead that up, that sometimes we the fruit, but we trying to be the grass. Sometimes we the herb, but we want to be the fruit. No, you can't be 
who they are. You got to get before God and be who he created you to be. And if you get before God and find out who he created you to be, it's at that time that you're going to bring forth the fruit that's within you. Because God has greatness inside of you, but it's not just going to come out because somebody yell at you. No. And then you say, well, that passed the line. No, I ain't lying. You gonna, I told you you got to go through some dark times. I told you sometimes you're going to fail and you have to get back up in order to sometime that adversity and you pressing against things. Sometimes it's that adversity is showing you the champion that's in you to overcome the adversity. How you going to be a champion when you never fought nothing? You just want all the trophies. You just want the penthouse office, but you don't want to do what the boss tell you to do. You don't want to stay up late. You don't want to miss no meals. You don't want to sweat, praise God, but you want to lose weight. You, don't, you, don't, you, you want to keep eating everything you want to eat and do everything you want to do, but you want the results. It's, listen, if the capacity that God has, it's going to take some work. It's going to, if you got to give up to go up. It's something you're going to have to give up. Some, some people you're going to have to let go because they ain't going to, baby, don't y'all know when those spaceships, when they start going up those boosters, they take them up so far, them boosters can't go up where that ship going. Them boosters got to fall off because those boosters don't have the capacity to go that high. Them boosters done done their job. It's time for them to fall back to the earth, and you got to keep on. Them people who done left you, the people who gave up on you, that's all right. Say, say God, I thank you that I'm still here. You got to get up where God has placed you and keep soaring. Praise God. Keep moving because it's capacity within you to be who God I'm telling you, come here, my brother. Come here, come here, come, 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 come. I'm telling you, man, you still got the capacity. You still keep dreaming. You get up and go for it, plan a little bit more, look at it a little bit differently, but God is with you. You got the capacity within you. But you got to find out who God made you to be. And then be that. Then the fruit will be evident. What's the next one? We, got, we only got two more hours. What's the next one? What's the next one? Plant it. Once you know who you are and you that seed, you got to get somewhere and get planted like Antioch. Don't be running all around from church to church and everywhere. You want to get this person advice? You don't care if they're talking about God or whatever. You want to go to the psychic? You want to go to the tarot card? You want to go to the voodoo man and the voodoo lady? You don't care what? You want to go somewhere. You ain't, you, 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 listen, y'all think it ain't happening. It's happening. You got to get planted in the house of God. He the one who gave you the gift. Now you need to stick with him. Listen to the, look at the promise of God. Y'all write this down. Psalm chapter eight, uh, 92 verse 13. Those that be what? Jumping all around from church to church. Running around wanting to know what everybody think. Worried about everybody. No, 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 no. It's going to be some difficult times, but you stay it's going to be some storms and some rain, but you stay. Because you know if you stay planted, it's only a matter of time before you come forth. Those that be planted in the house of what? The Lord might flourish. It could happen. It depends on the year. Mm -mm, yeah. If you stay with God, your knees might have been shaking 20 years ago. <laughs> but if you stick with God, you're going to flourish. I'm speaking to people who are young. 
I'm speaking to people that are old and seem like you can't make it no more. If you continue to read Psalm 92, verse 13, read those verses. It talk about how people got old and God still did in their life. Y'all got to read it. I can't do that because I only got an hour left. If you keep reading Psalms, verse 92, you'll see that, that it talks about older people who still can be, you still can be, you, all your failures as a young person, you did that so that you can do what you need to do now. But you know now what you got to do. You got to take more measured steps because you ain't got that much what? You ain't got that much time to be worried about what people say. You got to take everything that you've been through and even nobody went with you. Now you got to measure your steps. You, you can't run around like this. You know, uh uh-uh. You got you got to get up and take your time. <laughs> and you got to say, I'm going one or two places today. <laughs> I ain't finna be running all around, but these one or two places I'm going, they're gonna be full of purpose. I'ma call Pastor Jones and encourage him and tell him, son, I done made it through, you keep going. Then I'm going to call the Sunday school people, and I'm going I'm to just say a quick prayer. I can't pray too long. I'm going to call the Sunday school people, I'm going to say a quick You got the now, as you older, God can still, for you still got the capacity in you. Even don't matter how old you are, praise God, you still have the capacity in you to be who God created you to be. Praise God, but you have to just get up. Trust in God. It don't matter how old you are, praise God, you still have that capacity in you. And God is going to do exactly what he's purposed to do in your life. If you just stick with God, it don't matter where you are. Stick with, stay what? Stay playing that the scripture. I ain't even have to make it up, did I? That's in the Bible, in your Bible, my Bible, everybody's Bible right there. The next one, what's the next one, y'all? Zero minutes. Plan it. <laughs> Pastor say the next one is zero minutes. <laughs> you act like you can't see. <laughs> ever, since, ever since I preached for you that time when your knees were shaking, now you act like you don't want to sit down. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 you're going to need a partner to make it. You out here trying to make it by yourself, maybe that's the reason why you haven't fulfilled everything, God, because you, want, you don't want to listen to nobody else. You always right. You know everything. You don't know everything. You got, you, you don't, and so God gave Adam Eve so that they could come together and be fruitful. That applies in business, that applies in, in church. That applies in other things. You, sometimes you need your partner to bring out what's in you to connect with what they have so that then you can be what? You need partnership sometimes. Amen? And I'm going to tell y'all, you know who, if nobody else don't want partner with you, know who will partner with you? God. Y'all read this because I can't give it to you too much. I just can give you the scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 say, God will work in you and do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Next slide, real quick. Next slide. Next slide. We can't, I can't really do that too much. The next, next slide. Pursue. <clears throat> you got to pursue what it is that God called you to do. You just can't sit there and say, oh, I'm so gifted. I'm so blessed. I know God called me to do this, but when you going to get up? He, God called you. Now, if he called you and you, you, nobody won't give me a chance, you, you, you better go preach in the street. They won't let me preach at any of y'all. Listen, if you got the call, you go find somewhere to do what God. Some people planted in the wrong places. And they stifling your growth. They won't, they stifling your growth. You got the gift, but they won't, you've been trying for 30 years, but they won't even let you. You've been telling them till you blew in the face. I can do this. They ain't gave you a chance yet. It's 30 years later. And you stand with them people who don't see what God put in you. Sometimes you got to switch your location. Sometimes you got to let things go. 
I'm gonna tell y'all this last thing and then I gotta go. I'm gonna cut short and shorter than two hours a day now. I'm gonna get y'all next time though. <laughs> on the two hours. I'm trying to stay employed. Here at Antioch. <laughs> Listen, if you read John chapter 15, man, when I was going through that difficult time, man, God told me, He told me this true. He said, this is not going to be the last time. You think that's what I needed to hear? And in the darkness and in the hurt and in the pain and all. Do you think that's what I wanted to hear, should I say? I didn't want to hear that God going to keep pruning stuff out of my life. Because pruning hurts. And it's uncomfortable, and, and God be taking, taking people out of your life that you thought you would be with for. Start your, your limbs that, that, you, that you got used to your limbs acting right. Now your limbs won't even act right, but you still got, you still got who? You still got God. I don't care what change or what pruning process takes place in your life. Pruning and challenges, God told me, son, it ain't going to what? It ain't going to never stop. But my word that I told you is always going to be true. I'm going to take some stuff out of your life. It's going to hurt. But that next season, I took that out so you could grow something over here. That, 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 that thing was stifling. Sometimes you have to let things Sometimes you got to let people go because you being fruitful, but God don't want you to just be fruitful. He wants you to bear much fruit. So those are some of the things on the dynamics of growth and expanding your capacity. If there's somebody, it all begins, as we said, when we was worshiping God at the beginning. It begins with, with your creator and the one who created you. And no matter where you are, no matter where we are, and we don't understand what God created us to be. We done made so many mistakes. We done just lost hope. God hasn't changed his mind on you. Some people may not forgive you. Some people may not understand, but God still love you. And the same thing that he created you for when you was in your mother's womb is the same purpose and plan that he had for you now. But you have to come to him. We like to call it the ABCs here when we talk about repentance and alignment, aligning ourselves back with the creator. We like to say that you admit your sins. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then we want to put our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he did nothing wrong. He did everything God wanted him to do, and then he died for our fault. Then what we have to do is believe that in our hearts and commit it, uh, uh, confess it with our mouth. At that point, we'll be saved. And so if you want to get on track, I want you to come forward because I'm going to pray for purpose in your life. If there's somebody who don't, who don't really know directionally where you're going and you're looking for a new start and different things, I want you to come. If there's somebody who wants to make sure that you get direction, the first steps, if you want, when you get direction, you want to definitely get the first steps right. And that first step is accepting Jesus Christ is your Savior and your Lord. And when you accept him, then he'll begin to help you line everything up. Your purpose, your, God is going to show you your purpose. Those of you that may be discouraged and those of you who may feel like it's over, you can come because I know that God sent this word forth for you. He's going to revigorate you. He's going to inspire you. He's going to give you refreshing. Yep, God is going to do it. And he sent this word for you so those gifts that's in you can be stirred up. Maybe there's somebody who's been joining, visiting this church for a long time and you want to join this church. 
Thank God. Come on up here, my sister. I thought about you when I was praying. Come on up here. Come on. Yeah, girl, come on. And her sister. Where her sister at? She out of town. Come on. Come on over. But maybe it's somebody who, praise God, want to join this church. You can come. You can come. This is a great place to be planted. You, you can come on. All right. But before I end, I'll tell you why my sister came up. You can go, go back now. Is there somebody that want to get their life to Christ today? Give me a hug, sir. God bless you. You want to give your life to the Lord? You want to join? Well, God bless you. So we have someone that's going to give their life to the Lord and somebody that's going to join. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, you being aligned, God, this is just something that God is doing to align you to come forth for what God has in you to come forth. I told y'all so many times that the things that God is doing in this church, the growth process that's happened over the last 20 something years since Pastor Jones has been here, this church has continually been growing and progressing and moving from, from it's been moving from glory. Somebody say, God ain't even finished yet. It's been moving from glory. And I told you this before the same anointing that is causing these things to happen in this local assembly, that anointing is present here to actually operate in your personal life. Because this is the place where you are. It's the place where you plant it. So the same thing is it's in you. That's why I've gone forth and started a nonprofit organization because I've been under Pastor Jones. I'm in this. I'm, I'm a visionary by... Uh, relation I want you to start seeing greater in your life I want you to see past the hardships you are gonna grow and you being aligned for that anybody else want to give their life to the Lord today we're gonna pray with our sister come on my sister we're gonna pray and we pray to the Lord God repeat after me as you speaking to the Lord God I admit that I'm a sinner, but I thank you that you love me no matter how bad I am and no matter how many mistakes. Thank you that you love me. I ask you to forgive me for my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I admit and, and receive you, Jesus, as my Savior and my Lord, come into my life. Lead me, guide me, give me your spirit that you promise to those that believe. Thank you, Lord. I'm saved, I'm fruitful, and I will live out the life that you have purposed for me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Is somebody who want to somebody who want to join the church? My sister, anybody else want to join? Anybody else want to join? So we want to welcome you, and we want to give what we call my brother. Give me a hug, man. God bless you, and great to see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And welcome to the family. The local family. It's a greater family that you don't see. And they with you the whole way. Praise God. So we want to give you guys what we call the right hand of fellowship. We want to welcome you to this church. Praise God. And Pastor Jones always say you are part that was missing. But now since you've come, praise God, the capacity and everything that's in you, God is going to continue to help you grow. Where's our commitment ministry? We got our commitment ministry right here. They're going to take you to the side. They're going to go take you through some classes so you can see more about the church. 
um, and see where, where you fit in. And my sister, let me give you the right hand of fellowship. Go with the commitment, and they're going to help you. What happened? Hmm? Somebody else want to give their life to the Lord? Come on, my friend. say a prayer and what you're doing is you're praying to God and you may not understand everything right now but it's okay what you say in this prayer you get yourself in connection with God and he's gonna lead you into everything that he has for you okay so at this point I'm just leading you to speak to God all right so you can repeat after me God I admit I admit that I'm a sinner that I'm a sinner but I thank you but I thank you that you still love me that you still love me um, Jesus, Jesus, I accept you. I accept you as my savior. As my savior and my Lord. And my Lord, come into my life. Come into my life and give me. And give me your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit that you promise. That you promise to those that believe. To those that believe. Thank you. Thank you. That I am. That I am who you created me to be. Who you created me. And to I'll be. go forth. And I'll go forth in that way. In that way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. You got a new birthday, so write this day down, all right? Today you a child of God. Give me five, man. I'm so happy for you. So we've had a fruitful day today. Just shy of two hours. But listen, <laughs> I called my sister up because I one time during the, the organization that I've been working with, one time she came and her sister helped me put together this party for Pastor Jones. They put together this party. I didn't know how to do that stuff, but I, God allowed me to partner with somebody who did know how to do it, right? And I was sitting around there eating cake and doing stuff that I didn't even have the gifts to do. For those of you that are here, I want to just go ahead and pray with you. God is going to give you direction and the fullness of what God has created you to be. You, you won't be it later. That's who you are right now. You're not going to be what God created you to be later. You're not going to be it later. You are what God created you to be right now. And what God has placed inside of you, as you continue to stay planted in God, those things are going to come out of you. Say, I am who God says I am. Hallelujah. The fullness of who God created me to be shall be manifested for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So if there's somebody else here, whatever they're praying, looking for God, we just pray that you minister in every situation and help them. Thank you that they're already victorious as they come forth and put their faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Everybody, uh, taking your seat. Let's give the Lord a hand for Pastor Thomas. Amen. Great word. Great, great word. Great word. Amen. I, I just, I was just taking notes, and these preachers don't know I get a lot of my sermons from them. <laughs> Amen. And I think I got about three today. Amen. But I'm here today uh, uh, to say that I, I appreciate being a part of, uh, of this ministry, as Pastor Thomas was saying, that all of us are, are full of capacity and are, you know, if we, if we really listen to the word in which he preached, 
and to uh, exercise that word, you'll be surprised what God has for you. And so I want you to know, look around and hear, this didn't just happen. Amen. God is doing something in our life. There's anointing on our life. There's anointing on this church. And as pastor says, this is good ground. This is good ground to grow in. But our, I, uh, I want to read something here because we know in another week or so we're going to be talking about the Willow Lynch letter. This is our, our what we call Black History Month in the month of February. And I, first of all, let me apologize for what happened on last Tuesday. Or if you ran into some parades and stuff like that, that was the cost of my birthday. Amen. <laughs> uh, I was, I was, we was driving up North Florida, and I was asking George why was the, the traffic so thick on Monday as we was going up to uh, North Florida. And I said, man, why is this traffic so thick? Uh, that was Monday as we was traveling up. Then it hit me. They were going in front of me for the parade on Tuesday. Uh, so so I, I apologize for what happened there for you all on my birthday last Tuesday. But exploring the impact of the Will Lynch letters and observance of Black History Month, we know this is Black History Month in February. Some very special things happens in this month. I've heard that some have started doing your own research, amen, on founding, and you found that in your research, you found that the Will Lynch letters, because I was saying, hey, y'all read the book, get the book. And I, you found, or some of you, you found it to be interesting, fascinating, and also controversial things uh, about the Will Lynch letters. And I think I've achieved my goal, our objective within this congregation, because what happened after asking some of you to read the Will Lynch letters, I see it stirred up an interest in knowing more about black history. Give the Lord a praise, yeah. amen. <laughs> Well, concerning the attacks on black history that we're all aware of right now, this is very important, not only for African Americans, but all Americans. And I hope the book study or the workshop about the Will Lynch letters will incite a renewed interest in, in black history. And this is as a public advisory. We wish to clarify, I want to wish to clarify that AMBC do not endorse all the views or opinions or the contents written within the book. Amen, listen to me. But there are some excellent talking points within the pages of that book of Willa Lynch. Any of us who knows anything about black history knows there are some things written within the page of that book cannot be denied as it relates to us as a people, amen. Therefore, we look forward to renewed interest in the black history and hopefully a new mindset about the contributions that black people have made for this great country. Our children and our grandchildren must know their rich heritage. Listen to me, y'all. I believe the ongoing systemic racism and bigotry in the, in the nation continues because of the lack of knowledge, both among people of color and also of those of other whites. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I think the reason is that we continue to see racism and bigotry is that on both sides of the spectrum, people don't know the truth. If people know the truth about something, that's what we cannot veil the truth of what happened to this country. We need to know not just black history, but history in this country. And that includes black history. If we just know the whole, si and once you know the truth, when our white kids and our black kids know what happened, then we can sit down and talk. But if black people can't sit down and talk, who else gonna talk? Amen, somebody. As we know, new laws have been passed right here in the state of Florida forbidding schools from teaching specific facts of history for fear that it would offend people of other races. Therefore, some churches in the area have taken up the mantle to offer a safe place to teach black history, amen, without being hindered. Let us not allow this book study or the workshop about Willis Letters achieve what the book teaches which was the intent of Mr. Went, Mr. Lynch to divide us. Amen. So when we, whatever your research says, it is not about Pastor Jones, not about anything else. We love, some of my best friends are white people. I got some good buddies. Amen. I, 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 amen, somebody. I got some very good friends, but I still need to know my heritage. 
and I still need to be able to talk to my white friends as they can talk to me. Everybody should feel comfortable to talk about things that nobody want to talk about. That's what's happening in the country. We must do this. And we can't let a workshop, a letter on Willie Lynch, amen, keep us from getting together and talk about some talking points. You know, my mother told me, and I'm, I'm going to get her out of here. My mother told me last week, she said in Midway, which I didn't know until last week, she says there were times in Midway, across from my house where I was raised up, they used to put, put a, a, a cross and burn in across my mother's house, burn the crosses, that every time that somebody, some black person did something in Midway, they had burned those crosses to send a message, amen. And I didn't even know that happened there across to my house. And there were certain places they would put the cross in Midway to burn them at a certain time that something happened in the community. They would put those cross and burn the cross to send a message to the whole Midway community that if y'all get out of line, this is what's going to happen. I didn't know that, but when talking to older people, and you, you that's in here, you have some experience that you can share. So at the Willie Lynch workshop, a book study, bring some of your experiences that you can share with other people. Uh, that's what it's going to be about, about sharing some experience so our kids can know. Because most of the young, young kids, you talk to them, they don't know nothing about black history. They don't know nothing about their heritage. And if they don't know how they're going to go somewhere, if they don't know from where they came, you don't know where you're going until you know where you come from. So I'm hoping that we'll get your support. So I want to say right now at this point, please, thank you so much for your support as we continue to fight to be recognized as a contributor to this great nation we call the United States of America. Be blessed, y'all. First Lady has her hand up. She has the books for $7 if you'd like to purchase them uh, before you leave. All right, we're good. We had a nice service today, amen, a full service, a little longer than normal, amen. But we had things that we wanted to share that we feel were going to be a blessing and minister to the congregation as a whole, amen. So as we stand, amen, I just want to make an update on the announcements. Uh, this Wednesday is our third Wednesday, so our hospitality team will be serving food, so if you weren't thinking about coming to Bible study, you might want to think again. Uh, they will be serving fish, and they know how to fry some fish. Grits, baked beans, hush puppies, a dessert, and a drink, all for $7. You can't beat that with a bat like they used to say, amen. So come on out, enjoy, and get some food for your nourish your body, and then come stay and get the word to nourish your soul. Amen? Amen. I, I noticed also an announcement there was the, for the blessing bags uh, that we're doing. Uh, there'll be no table after service. Uh, we'll get the checklist added to the website and to the, to the church app to show you what checklist of items that we need, and you can bring them out into the hallway and place them in a brown box in the foyer. We thank you for everybody that's donated so far and appreciate your support. All right, thank God for the word, amen? Amen, thank God for the word, amen? Hallelujah. That was a fruitful word, so let's go out and be fruitful. Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here, Lord God. We thank you, Lord that it was by only your divine appointment that we would be here. We thank you for adding to the number of you in your kingdom and your family, Lord, for those that gave their lives to the Lord today, God. We thank you, Lord, that some young people came up and gave their life to Christ today. It takes a lot, Lord God, to come up in front of everybody here, and I thank you for all the young people who participated in this service today as well, Lord God, and giving them the courage to come up and be used by you, Lord. As we abide in you, you said we can bear much fruit. That is your purpose and plan for us. Let us let this word stay planted in our hearts, oh God. Holy Spirit, keep it in remembrance as we go through this week and day by day. And that if we get into some challenges and some struggles, to remember that we got to stick with you, Lord. And to continue to keep walking with you and keep seeking you. That if that is not the end, Lord. That we can continue to press through and you will bring us through and bear much more fruit. Oh God, Lord, just continue to reveal 
your plan and purpose for our lives individually and collectively. And God, continue to do a great work in this ministry, Lord. We thank you for our Pastor Thomas. Continue to do a great work in him, Lord. Our Pastor Jones, continue to do a great work in these pastors, these men of God, Lord. And continue to let that anointing trickle down unto us and that we can spread it everywhere we go, Lord. That people will want to come to know you and come be a part of this ministry, Lord God, because they see your work being done. As we leave this place, let it only be this edifice, but not from your presence as we meet as, until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.